go. So gentlemen, I want to thank you both so very, very much for joining me today. And uh, I, I'm very fortunate that I've been able to call Richard a friend for many years, but this is, uh, this is a new introduction uh, uh, to me of George. So I'm really excited about getting a chance to share some time with you and talk with you. And because awesome. there's no way I can do the job nearly as well as you two could do, would you like to give a quick bio of who you are and, and what you do? Would you like to be sneaky and give the bio of the other person? Because then it's not so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why don't we, why don't we, yeah, why don't we start with Richard? So, uh, you know, he's part of uh, Stage Combat. And, yeah. So sorry, am I introducing myself or am I introducing yeah. Master George? We're going to talk about you for a <laughs> sec, Richard. So Richard is one of, one of my teachers here at Breaker Wit and has been uh, a member. Oh my God, when did you start, Richard? Um, at least 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> But you've had a lot in your life. And so this isn't that you've been slow or anything. It's just you've had a really full experience and you've, you've uh, gone and done new things. And this is one thing we'll talk about and then came back when you could. So, so I'm super, well, Richard is, is a stage combat teacher here at Rake Your Wit, as well as a practitioner of what, Richard? Uh, I am a practitioner of Ukichita, indigenous uh, combat arts. And so therefore, now it's your turn to talk about George. My turn to talk about George. Yeah. Master, Master George Lapine, uh, Okimikon Kiskinakumaku. Um, he is uh, essentially the person who brought uh, Okichita to the forefront um, and brought it as a recognizable martial art rather than just uh, something that communities spoke about back in the day. <laughs> he resurrected this martial art form. So that's a tremendous yeah. amount uh, of, of responsibility, right? Like meaning the, the, the weight of all that upon your shoulders, uh, a, a thank you for taking it on and, and bringing it forward. How did you, um, because I, correct me if I'm wrong, is this, this is not necessarily the very first martial art that you trained in, George, is that correct? Well, I would say it's probably the first one that I, okay, I trained sorry. in because, yeah, because I started as a young, young boy doing, you know, a lot of Indigenous uh, activities and that. So this would have been the first thing I, I would have started back in my home in Manitoba. And then I was interested in other martial arts as I, as I grew older. Because I, I was growing up during the era just after, you know, the Bruce Lee era and, right. and Chuck Norris was big now and, and those types of things. And, you know, back when I was watching television back in those days you were getting you know a beta record you know deck and you know it was front top loader and you slam it down you try to freeze at all the shots and stuff like that and it was those martial artists that were you know the big guys back then and so you know my draw to it was saying you know I, I was really interested in it and I needed to learn more but there was no one in my immediate family they could all show me how to shoot and how to sharpen knives and how to throw different weapons and how to track animals and how to you know, hide appropriately, how to use, you know, the earth and the ground and the trees and, you know, for camouflage, they taught me all that. So, you know, that was, that was a different thing. Cause we, you know, our philosophy is if you're, you have to be a good hunter to be a good warrior and to be a good warrior, you have to be a good hunter. And both of those are uh, an application of providing and protecting th those two concepts. So, so that's always been drilled down into me from a very, very young age. So, but the side of, you know, learning how to kick and do these different techniques and, you know, just the, the flashiness of what I saw, you know, in some of these films and in Hollywood, I guess, you know, it was spectacular, you know, as a young boy seeing some of this and I just, I never saw it in our community. And so it was a, a, a journey of mine to, to start doing that. And I had, you know, endorsement from the family to go do this. You know, I've always was a very energetic boy and wanted to do that. But it was, it was at times like that when I was training with these masters, because usually by the time you become a black belt. You've been doing an art for between, you know, at that time, it was about three and a half, four years. Nowadays, it's like two years. But back in those days, it was a good four years that you were with your same master. You know, five, six, seven years later, they're telling you, they, they, you know, your history, you know, George, uh, you know, you guys would have your own martial art. You did your own you know, activities. And I would explain to them what I learned and what I did. And they, you know, they would always endorse me saying, you need to go back and really research this now that you're a proficient martial artist. You could look at some of these things from your history. Also talk to, you know, the old ones and, and family. And maybe you could start looking at quantifying, you know, a, a concept. So that's what I, I ended up doing, you know, from my territories. And then eventually when I moved to Ontario, 
you know, we started teaching it out of the Native Center here. So, you know, at that time, that, that's probably been a good, I would probably say a good 30, 40, almost 40 years of research, you know, from a young, young standpoint of looking at everything and, and really aggressively in the last 25 years. So, you know, quarter of a century, I've been, you know, looking into these different things and specifically focusing on my territory. Right. And, you know, heavily endorsing and supporting other communities and, and their respective martial art and combative uh, systems. But I only have been really focused on my territory to, to, to honor my ancestors and, and my traditional grounds. So to make sure that I don't step outside of that, um, you know, I've been very, very focused on that. I don't know if I would have had that same focus if I didn't take those other martial arts. Right. So, you know, and I, I hold a, you know, six stand in Hapkido, six in Taekwondo. I'm one of the highest ranked instructors at, as a First Nations person in, in Canada. Now, not anymore, but back in the day I was. And Judo as well. I got to my brown in Judo. That was probably one of my first arts that I got into. Then Taekwondo, then Hapkido. And so, you know, the, the rolls and the throws and things like that for me and some of those arts was very easy because I learned it when I was younger. It was the kicking skills and some of the striking techniques that, that obviously took some time to understand and developing patterns and things like that, which was totally foreign to us as Indigenous fighters. So, you know, there is literally no forms in Okichita. There's the closest we have to it is maybe our weapon movements so that you have memory of the movements. And uh, that's about the closest that we get to it. But other than that, there's no formal pattern system like you would see in other martial arts so it was basically a full circle or full medicine wheel i say you know i covered each doorway to make sure that i got all that history right and i was presented with this responsibility in the early 90s to to take this forward and to run with it by the elders council out in the prairie so it was a huge task that was put to me at the time i was confident as an instructor but at the same time, the inherent responsibility of taking that community responsibility, you know, of, of knowledge and everything and going forward and doing the research. Don't believe everything you read. You know, um, you're going to have to talk to people. You're going to have to interview people. You're going to have to seek out, you know, knowledge keepers and things like that. And I did all of that. So it was a great journey and it still continues to this day. <laughs> I, I can only imagine yeah. um, uh, that. And, and this is, uh, this is, I, I'm almost embarrassed to say this because compared to you, I feel like I am but a dilettante in what I do. But, but I know that the more I learn, the more I realize I need to learn, right? And there's that, that yeah, huge absolutely. sense of, of respect for how much more there is, right? And, and, I, and I, mis, uh, I, I clearly misunderstood before when, when, I, when I asked about the other arts because uh, obviously mm -hmm. um, Rich and I have spoken uh, of you and, and I just misunderstood. I thought that you had taken some other art and then realized there was this wealth. And I love the idea that it allowed you to remind what you had learned as a, as a child and gave you um, inspiration to go back and go deep. Because I think uh, branding is great, right? And, and the martial arts you were talking yeah. about that you experienced watching on, on television, I grew up with too, of course. And, and um, mm -hmm. there's something to be said about uh, uh, and I don't mean to dim diminish the other martial arts, but there was, there was definitely a pop culture uh, success uh, among certain performers who took the art into uh, film, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, Aikido and, and, and karate yeah. and, 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 and uh, Kung Fu. And so it was really neat to see uh, where those took us to what we think about in telling stories and performing. So if I could jump to Richard for a sec, um, Clearly, you, uh, and correct if I'm wrong here, um, you had had experiences with stage combat and, and things before you were able to work with George, right? And, That's and, correct. Yeah, so I guess, was it that you were seeking a story and authenticity that really spoke to you, that led you to him? Or was it the other way around that, that you heard of him and suddenly went, oh my God, this is something I really need to, to look at? Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so uh, while training at the WIT um, and doing all my stage combat training uh, and recognizing that uh, it's extremely beneficial to have some sort of martial art background if I wanted to become an instructor, um, I was seeking out different uh, styles of martial arts um, and 
I wasn't finding anything. And then interestingly enough, uh, on a Tinder date, um, this lovely lady told me of this, uh, this martial arts style because she took martial arts. Uh, and she told me of this martial arts style, Okichita, that she hadn't taken, but she was very intrigued about. And mm -hmm. I said, hmm, Okichita, I recognize that name. Uh, I recognize that word. And so I looked it up and I eventually found George's contact info. I sent him an email um, and we had a little bit of correspondence. I went to my first class and I have not stopped, essentially except for with injuries and, and COVID and stuff like that. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I was, I was looking for something. Um, I, I felt like there was a, a slight void in uh, my training as well as my spirituality. And I found that George and Okichita uh, really helped fill those, those holes because coming from an indigenous background um, and moving to Toronto where I didn't, I wasn't necessarily following my culture uh, finding Okichita and George and the people involved in the class and the native center that really helped me, uh, get back into it. And yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, really happy you talked about the spiritual aspect because, uh, this is something I think was really important that I, that I'd like to discuss and hear from you about. We of course have had other, uh, martial artists come to the WIT and, and I want to be very careful never to, uh, diminish or dismiss all of the aspects, both the the spiritual and physical and mental qualities that come together in the various forms. And, and I think the danger is that when we hopefully respectfully borrow and bring them into the, the performance realm of stage combat, um, we don't want to, well, diminish or belittle, right? And so, uh, I'm going to start with Richard, and then I'd like to go up, uh, go up to you, George. And so, so I guess when you started thinking about, because I knew that you and I talked about using this in stage combat, what were some of the things that were very important to you? And then to give you a, a moment to think about uh, this, George, is what is what is very important to you if people are going to try to to use um, Okichita in a storytelling manner? when when creating art and and performance so i'll give you a second to think about that so richard first with you though um what was really important to you when you were bringing this in and and because you have in fact uh shared it so so talk to me a bit about that i think one of the biggest things for me um was to do it right do it the right way um in a lot of uh a lot of the native practice and culture, um, you offer tobacco as uh, as, a, as a, a gesture to either ask permission or seek help. Um, and I offered tobacco to Master George, first of all, um, to write my instructor's paper and to uh, potentially uh, go forward and bring Okichita into the stage and screen combat. So that was the, the first thing for myself was to, well, first of all, train <laughs> uh, and get some sort of knowledge, some sort of background, um, and then ask the permission from the person uh, whether or not it was okay to actually bring this outside of uh, where we train for Okichita. And he was kind and generous enough to allow me that honor uh, to bring it forward. And since then, I've, I was able to invite people from the stage combat world to join us in Okichita training as well. So that was nice. Fantastic. And did my, did my question make sense, George, that, uh, that, that clearly there, there are two worlds. One is the, the full gravitas of what it is to immerse yourself in the art. The second is people who, for, for various reasons, won't be able to do it properly, but may find themselves using it in, in art and storytelling. So I guess, what are the sensitivities? What are the important things that you would ask? Yeah, I think 
one, one of the things I, I always say to to students that are that are fairly new and they're trying to put you know our 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 dominant society mentality towards of what this martial art is about and and one of the easiest ways I, I always explain it is regardless of what martial art you're taking if you're truly taking a form of traditional martial art you'll always have some form of cultural application that's assisted with that and so if you're taking if you're taking true Japanese karate martial arts or true Taekwondo or, or Taekyung type of martial arts you're going to le learn that Korean and that Japanese culture to some extent because its baseline is 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 you know grown from that that concept so Okichita is no, no different and what's really really important is that I think nowadays we're losing so much of that spiritual and that grounding with respect to truly learning an art form regardless whether or not it's art itself a physical movement or a combat application it's a form of it's it, they're all concepts of, of art and there's always background behind that and so the minute that you lose that background and you're only teaching movement, you lose the concept of the true birth of that system and, and, and of that artwork. So it's very, very important uh, for me. And, you know, I've been mentored and directed very, very well through the years from Knowledge Keepers is that when we're sharing our martial art, we're also sharing a story with it. Just like you said, it's very, very important to be a part of that story. And, you know, I alluded to it earlier when I was mentioning that, you know, to be a good hunter means that you'll be a good warrior. And to be a good warrior means you have to be a good, that you'll be a good hunter. And the idea behind that is number one is to protect and number two is to provide. And, and the thing is, is that too many times people get mixed up in martial arts just to protect, but they forget about providing. And that providing doesn't necessarily mean to be something monetary or physical presence. It could be sharing a story. It could be providing, um, you know, um, uh, prosperity, but it could also be providing a story. And, and, and what's really important is that if someone's explaining Okichita, they should be able to explain the cultural component and aspect of it as well and how it follows, you know, those teachings of, of, of the planes. And so, you know, when you think of our senior ranking systems and things like that, we don't have a lot of belts in Okichita. There's literally four belts in Okichita. And so the idea is never to, for monetary gain, and I think that's always been a success for us. It's about sharing the story. It's not about making money and building a big training center and doing things like that. We're not like that at all. It's, it's very literally what we call sweet grass roots, um, you know, and, and um, it's, it's the easiest way to teach that. But, you know, when, uh, you know, we, we were talking about looking at some of these artists on film and on stage and, and things of that nature and, and what's really, really important is that it's great to do those moves. I mean, there's nothing better than watching, you know, the professionals from China demonstrate, you know, traditional Kung Fu. And, and it's when the monks are doing it, it's absolutely spectacular. But people are looking at that, but they're not thinking what those monks had to do to get there and, and the, the commitment and everything that they have to do and what they give up to be able to, to participate in something like that. And it, it is a challenge within our society. There's no question. I can't tell you how many times I have people asking me or telling me, I love that scene in Last of the Mohicans, you know, with the war club and the way they fight and everything. And I go, it's the most accurate uh, depiction that has literally been out there with the exception of a couple other films that have these other little pieces here and there. I think for us to truly, or for society to truly honor it, you know, you can go to those martial artists, but you should be speaking with traditional people that have an understanding of the history that's behind why we moved a certain way and why we do things a certain uh, uh, way uh, because of our history or because of our limitations or what we only worked with. And so if you're telling a story, it, it has to be reflective of what that story means, what's the era that it reflects, and is it going to be to be accurate because you truly honor someone if you're if you're being accurate and mm -hmm. you're requesting it you know Richard alluded to um, giving tobacco when he was coming because he was asking for something and when you're asking for something you know it's a traditional way of doing that is to present tobacco and ask that question it's up to the person receiving it whether or not they're willing to take that or that responsibility so that's that person has to be brave because they're not just simply going to grab it 
they're going to say, okay, what's it for? You know? And so everything slows down. And, and I'm sure Richard could allude to this is that there's times where we're going, 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 and everything just stops and we regroup or there's a teaching that comes out right in the middle of that. And, you know, we can be very vicious and also very kind. So it's, stuff where